On today's episode, we'll talk about a new sweater that I started knitting, of course, some more hand spun, and the very beginnings of a weaving project. I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and if this is your first time joining me, welcome. You have come to a very special episode. This is number 100. Can you even believe it? I never thought that I would ever film 100 episodes of this show. Never in a million years. <laughs> so it was so funny when I saw the upper 90s creeping up as I was editing these uh, episodes. It was just crazy. So thank you so much to all of you who have stuck by me from the beginning. I know that there's a few of you out there. And for those of you who watch me week after week, thank you so much. It means the world to me. I will be doing a little giveaway at the end of the episode, and so stay tuned for details about that. But uh, what I'm wearing today, I'm wearing one of my favorite outfits. <laughs> this is my Odyssey shawl. The pattern's by Hohi Locatelli, and it uses three of Pineapple Yarns colors, which are Pacific Dreams, Sights on Summer, and Sunspot. And as you can tell, it is Yes, it's perfect for January. All the gray weather, all of the cold weather. This is an absolutely wonderful knit to wear. And I will have a couple of these colors next week in my shop update in case you're interested. But I absolutely love this DK weight shawl. It is, yeah, I absolutely love it. And I would be remiss to say if I can lean over, I'm definitely drinking a cup of tea today because it is really cold here. It's in the 50s. Yes, that's cold, I know. But <laughs> this is, I believe it's called Acai Berry. I think that's what it's called. It's from Stash and it is a hibiscus tea. And if you've watched for a while, you know I love hibiscus tea so much. So any, any kind of herbal tea that uses hibiscus as a base, it's so, so good. So that is what I'm drinking today in one of my new mugs from a friend. So it's, uh, yeah, it's making my day a little brighter. And I also lit a candle as well. This is Royal Palm. It is one of my favorite scents. It has fresh air and subtle coconuts, a little subtle coconut scent with tropical fruits, a little bit of floral, it is, the best scent ever. It's so good. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm just trying to keep it a little light in here. You know, January, you've got to remember it's going to be summer someday. So yeah, I'm there today. But I'm in a little bit of a new setup, if you noticed. And I've been thinking of switching it up a little bit and moving things around. I installed these shelves behind me. And so, um, I have somewhere to put a couple of knickknacks here and there. And the way the studio is set up, I actually have light coming um, on both sides like this now. And so when it's sunny, um, I'll have a little more natural light coming in and it'll just make filming a little easier and it'll make the video quality a little better as well. And so, yeah, so I was really excited to do that. I love my new setup and it'll be fun changing things out on the shelves and doing all those things. <laughs> so I'm actually going to talk about what I have on my mannequin today. This I have been saving for a couple months now. This is a woven project, a stole that I made out of all of my 2020 advent calendar minis. And so, this was vitamin C, which was the Pineapple Yarn 2020 Advent Calendar. And let me give you a close up. So 
you can see for all of you who have seen the advent calendar in action it had all these bold and bright speckles but it, the base of it was the, just this gorgeous pastel neon rainbow and so yes it is absolutely gorgeous and it even looks paler because i wove it with an undyed weft and so i warped up my loom with these beautiful rainbow colors and then actually did the actual weaving with undyed yarn so I think it turned out so pretty and I just I cannot tell you how much I loved this advent calendar this year so so pretty I also did some twisted fringe on the ends I know I haven't really talked about this project at all <laughs> actually this is the first time I've shown you and so um, yeah anyway here it is so beautiful I love it so much I did this so long ago I mean this was several months ago that I wove this up and so yeah I guess it's kind of like old news to me <laughs> but I really love how it turned out it's so so pretty and I have so much yarn left uh, just from one calendar I saved one for myself when I dyed them all up for you and I think what I'm going to do I have another project planned with another another woven piece of fabric but I am going to take the rest and maybe do some socks or do a smaller project that's knitted, just so you can see how it knits up too. But I think this is so, so pretty. And I do have all of, all of my video footage on how I twisted up this fringe. So I will get that out to you pretty soon. I wove that up on a 12 dent heddle, I'm pretty sure and um, I wove it up on my 32 inch Kromsky harp loom and I think I wrote some details down. I don't really know, honestly. It was one of my first projects I wove with my 32 inch loom and yeah, I know I had like a post-it note, like a sticky note somewhere and then I'm pretty sure I saw it in the hands of a child, one of my children, so I don't but that's why we have New Year's res resolutions, right? One of my goals for this year was to be better about documenting all of my projects. And so, so far so good. I am actually, I'm actually doing that. I've been really good about documenting all of my spinning and all of my projects so far. So that is good. I'm going to go ahead and move to my works in progress. I, um, so speaking of goals for 20, did I say 2020 goals? No, 2021, 2021 goals. <laughs> I am going to knit a sweater for everyone in my family and I have five children and a husband and I've already finished a sweater for myself in January, but I, I think I started that. I started that in 2020. I don't know if that counts. I, I guess I make up my own rules for this, so I'm counting that as a win. <laughs> so anyway, I started one for my son and this is where I got to. I really wanted to use some leftovers for my stash. And so what I did is I grabbed my Strange Brew pattern from Tin Can Knits, which is one of, it's just a wonderful pattern. And they have an entire pattern book with different color work patterns. I really love it. I test knit a few patterns for that book and um, really loved every minute of these patterns. They're just so, so great. And so I took, I had some graph paper that I used last year, I think, to plan my garden and just drew up a few, I just sketched out a few patterns. And this is what I came up with. Isn't it cute? So this is for my son, he's two years old. And these are just some leftovers from my stash. Um, the, this dark blue and kind of light gray, these two colors I used in another color work sweater, which was another tin can knits uh, pattern, believe it or not, isn't that funny? And um, then the green is a uh, Cascade 220, and that was also in my stash. And um, I believe it's called duck egg blue. Actually, I can look on the label because I have a new, 
a new uh, ball that I'm getting into here. It's Colorway um, 1985, which I'm pretty sure if you go to purchase that color, I think it's called Duck Egg Blue, even though it's green. Maybe it's called Duck Egg Green, I don't know. I'll put all the details below. <laughs> so what I did is I started knitting and I realized soon that I wasn't going to have enough yarn to knit an entire sweater from these two colors. Initially, I'd wanted to do it this blue color, the dark blue color, and so I found that I had enough with the green, and so I just ended up fudging uh, my color work design at the bottom just so it went straight into the green, and I think so far it looks super cute. It's going to look so cute on him, and every sweater that I make for my children are functional. They wear them all the time, and Last night, actually, I sat down and patched two sweaters that had, one had a tear in an elbow and another one had a big snag in the, in the arm. So my kids really do play a lot in their sweaters and they use them. And so this will get used a lot. All of these yarns are uh, DK weight and they are super wash. So this is going to be a really great sweater for him and he'll get a little use out of it this year um, when I'm done. I'm nearly done with the body, as you can see. It's fairly long. Um, I think I probably have a couple inches left on the green, and then I may do a little bit of this kind of style color work on the bottom just to tie the two together. And then I'll start on the sleeves, which sleeves for me go super fast. So this sweater will be done in no time. It, it, it was so fun though. I love color work so much and the Strange Brew pattern, if you, it is such a comprehensive pattern. I really can't recommend it enough. And so if you wanna design your own color work yoke, it is an awesome, awesome pattern. And you can do top down, bottom up, you can do the, the um, short rows at the back. So you can have the back slightly higher than the front. That's what I did. And yeah, it's just, there's so many options. So yeah, so I thought this was a cute sweater and wanted to show it to you. And then when I'm done with that, I'll be able to hit another goal and cross it off my list. But he wears his sweater and I, I know I showed it probably, I don't know, 10-ish episodes ago. He wears that little sweater all the time, all the time, every day he wears it. And so he really, really needs another sweater. I've been thinking towards my other children as far as what they want with their sweaters and what their styles are. And so I played a little around with a swatch this week and it was so much fun. I have this awesome yarn. I dyed myself a sweater quantity. Um, it was my Sun Club maybe last October, November. And uh, my Sun Club is Pineapple Yarns Bold and Bright Neon Club. And so this was, if you can see this yarn, this um, neon pink yarn right here, this was the colorway for that month. And I, I don't remember if it was October or November. I'll let you know in the notes below. But I paired that yarn with this amazing mohair. This is Pineapple Yarns uh, colorway in Coral Conch. This is my Noe Kid Mohair and Silk Blend. It's gorgeous and I love pairing it with, uh, with another uh, strand of yarn. And so that's what I did is I paired these two together. This pink, neon pink in general is just a, a really cool color and I wanted to warm it up a little bit and that's why I paired it plus Coral Conch is probably one of my favorite colors. <laughs> And so this is the swatch that I ended up with. I knit this on a size, a US size 10, which I don't remember what that is in millimeters off the top of my head, but it, for, I'm a loose knitter. So for most knitters out there, this would be like knitting them on uh, US 11s. And so it ended up being this like bulky weight super lightweight lofty knit it is gorgeous and I 
I love that I knit this sample up. I took the time and knit a sample up because I can use this for other projects and other colors. And um, so this is a DK weight yarn paired with this lace weight mohair silk strand and it is so soft and so lofty and so i'm really excited i think that i will tone this down a little bit i'll probably knit a sweater with this fabric but not the actual colors for my oldest daughter so she's really into like blush pinks and like soft colors and more muted colors and so I was thinking of pairing, I don't know really. I mean, she just loves like super pastel -y type colors. And so um, I was thinking of maybe doing like an undyed yarn, like an undyed merino with a color of mohair. So maybe like a, a pale pink mohair something like that it would just be really gorgeous and I've knit um, I think it was a, a doll sweater or a doll hat or something <laughs> with that uh, with an undyed merino wool and then a pale pink mohair um, stranded with it and it was beautiful it was so pretty so this was a swatch I knit up I'll probably just knit this color for myself I'm thinking of the I think it's the novice cardigan from petite knit um, i measured my gauge on this and i'm right at the gauge that that sweater needs and it's a super cute cardigan it's a little oversized it would just be super super comfy and so yeah so i wanted to show you this swatch i'll give you a close-up of it too So you can see all those like neon and black speckles in there, but it's stranded with that beautiful coral conch. Just so beautiful. I'm gonna try and show the halo on that. You can see it up here. Super fuzzy. And it just has a really, really beautiful drape. So pretty. And it warms that pink up, which is perfect for my skin tone. I look better in warmer colors. So that is it for my knitting this week. And um, honestly, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I got a lot of my color work sweater done. And I had thought about cranking up a couple pairs of socks and working on those. And it just never happened. So uh, I will have to put that on the, the back burner, things, things to do down the line, and maybe I'll have some socks to share with you here in the next few weeks. Whatever I didn't do in knitting though, I definitely did with my spinning. I have been so into spinning these days, and so I finished two spins actually. I began and finished two spins. This is a beautiful, beautiful yarn. I cannot tell you how much I love this color. This is um, actually a fiber in the shop right now and it's called Sea Life. And it is a superwash merino. And superwash merino has always been kind of like not my favorite and the reason is is that it's so like fly away and it's so slippery that it is not the easiest fiber to spin with and so if you want to spin with like a Coradale, Coradale's great to spin it's just a really easy fiber to spin um, something that's a non superwash is generally going to be easier to spin Merino is such a fine wool, it can be challenging. And so I actually grabbed one of the Sea Life fibers out of my shop and spun it up and I couldn't be happier. This is gorgeous. I'm still waiting for my um, very, very fast whorl to come for my Kromsky menstrual. And so I couldn't do a sock weight yarn like I've been waiting to do. I've been waiting to have that fast whirl and so I can 
give sock weight yarn another try but this ended up being beautiful and so let me show you it's unwashed obviously I haven't skeined it up yet but it's so so pretty I'm gonna get a lot of glare off my lights so I'm sorry for the light quality but you can see this is a two ply barber pole I just split the fiber in half and then I stripped it into four lengthwise and then just plied it together. So I didn't do any kind of color management because it is randomly dyed. I just kind of let the colors fall where they may. You can see how gorgeous that barber pulling is. And so I was super happy with this. This was very, very fun to spin up and um, yeah, this was a, actually a blast to spin up. It was so fast. I couldn't even believe it. And I did make a control card, which I don't think I have with me, but I did test it out. I, I went all the way to the point before washing the yarn. So I didn't take a sample off and wash it because it was only one skein. So I didn't, um, do like the full sampling of all the yarn that, I guess would have been a really good step. I guess it's probably best for a larger project to do that. But um, but yeah, I was really happy with this. No plans on what it will be. It will just live in my stash. I was really happy with the consistency of it. And um, yeah, I thought it was really, really good. Now, one thing that's coming to mind right now is I didn't write down how I spun this. And I don't know why I've been taking such good notes about how I've been spinning my yarn. And so I think what I did is I did a um, 12, let's see, 12 to one to actually spin the singles. And then I did a 16 to one, which is my fastest whirl currently to ply and I did a short backward draft with smoothing because that's my go-to and yeah so I guess that's that's about that so yeah that was one spin that I completed and I loved and so I grabbed another fiber to work on and, and I got a whole nother project done and I hadn't planned on this at all. This just flew though, because I was spinning it long draw. So this is a gorgeous spin. I mean, this was just really gorgeous. This was a beautiful combed top from Paradise Fibers, and I believe it was in October 2020's box, their monthly club. And it is a blend of, I know it has baby camel and merino, it has some tweed in it. And so you get these like black tweedy bits and there's some white, a little bit of white fiber, I don't know what that is. Um, there's baby camel and then the, there's hot pink in it, um, like a merino. And so there's all these colors and textures in it, but it's not super textured. And so to preserve the color, I decided to spin it like I had my Coradale spin that I showed last week. And so I tore, I would just um, break off chunks from the comb top and I spun it long draw off the tip of my finger from the fold. And it ended up with this amazing, amazing yarn. And I did a really soft two ply with it, which I wasn't, it ended up being super soft singles, but then the two ply, I ended up with a really soft two ply. It was just, it's just gorgeous. As you can tell, it's just really soft. I don't know if it will be this consistent when I end up washing it, just because there's a lot of merino in it, a lot of fine wool. I did really soft singles and then a little bit tighter plying, but the plies, if you can see up close, this is not tightly plied. It's a really soft, nice ply. And the yarn, 
It's just so gorgeous. So that is it. That is what I've been working on this week. I do have a weaving project that I started on, but there's really not much to show you. I did a, I wanted to do some pillow covers for my house and I had spun up these beautiful singles that are kind of like a warm pinky tan color. And I thought it'd be super fun to do some pillow covers for a couple of chairs um, that are pink and for Valentine's Day and for spring because why not? <laughs> and so I had spun these up quite a while ago. They're a bulky weight yarn. They'll be perfect for pillow covers. And so I just have these kind of 12 by 20 little pillows on the backs of two chairs. And that's what I'm gonna weave up. I did all the calculations and hopefully I'll have enough yarn. <laughs> and if I don't, we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to get those started. The problem is with my circular sock machine, with my looms, they're all here in the studio, which is exciting. I'm so fortunate to have this space but I also have five children and so I have very limited time if I don't have a set of needles and yarn to carry with me to places and to, you know, to do things. I have a spinning wheel in the living room and so I'm able to be with them um, and you know, just be with the family while I do my spinning. And so that's why I'm able to get so much done with my knitting and spinning. My weaving is another story. And so when I do have free time, I a lot of times I wanna spend it with them and not out here in the studio and when I am out here in the studio it's for work <laughs> so I need to make some time to work on that this week I don't think it'll be a very uh, I don't think it'll be a slow weave I think it'll actually end up being a pretty fast project knock on wood so we'll see <laughs> but I've been busy working out here in the studio dyeing a ton of yarn this week and I'm so excited. I will be having a shop update next week. So keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for the shop update preview. But I wanna thank everyone who shopped last week's update. It means the world to me for you to support my shop. And I hope you love everything you're able to get. And I just love being able to create all these beauties for you. So thank you so much for giving me that opportunity. I still have clubs up for February pre-orders, and so definitely check those out if you are into yarn and monthly clubs. They're so much fun. I have a yarn and candle club, which is my glow club, as well as my sun club, which is a bold and bright neons club. I'll link them below in case you wanna check those out. So now on to the 100th episode. It's so crazy, but it's here. I'm so excited. And I want to thank all of you for subscribing and all of you for tuning in every week to hear me go on and on about wool and fiber. <laughs> I've curated a box of some goodies and I would love to send it off to you as a thank you. If you are a spinner, I will tuck some fiber in there and I will fill it up with yarn and other little goodies just as a special way of saying thank you for your support of this channel. I will be choosing a winner from all the comments below. Make sure you're a subscriber and leave me a comment below letting me know what your 2021 crafting goals are. If you have your eye on a specific project, if you want to get better at a certain skill, if you don't have a goal, maybe you just knit whatever project pops up. Maybe you just go wherever the wind takes you. That's okay too, you can put that. And I would love if you would leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to this episode. So it pushes it out to other viewers who are interested in the same things we are. But thank you again so much for tuning in. I will see you next week with another episode. But until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.